Now thank we all our God. Jerry's going to come up and lead us this morning. And if you if you want to stand or just be seated, it's up to you. Jeremiah replied to the prophet Haniah before the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. He said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words you have prophesied by bringing the articles of the Lord's house and all the exiles back to this place from Babylon. Nevertheless, listen to what I say in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. From early times, the prophets who preceded you and me have prophesied war, disaster, and plague against many countries and great kingdoms. But the prophet who prophesies peace will be recognized as one truly sent by the Lord, only if his prediction comes true. The second reading, Matthew 10, verses 40 to 42. Anyone who welcomes me and anyone who welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person as a righteous person will receive the righteous person's reward. If anyone gives even a cup of cold water to the little ones who is my disciple, truly I tell you, that person will certainly not lose their reward. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lorraine, thank you for uh, l reminding me this is Father's Day. <laughs> and since I'm a father, you know, uh, happy Father's Day. Are you having fun? Fathers, are you having fun? Okay, good, good. That's what ha it's supposed to happen today. Uh, how many people have already gone fishing this morning? Nobody. This afternoon. Okay, good. It is, ha it is a happy day, and it's, uh, we're thankful for Father's. As many of you know that uh, I've traveled over to Pakistan four times, and you know I, I still remember the first time I traveled there. Uh, one of the things happened was we, we usually arrived at 2 o'clock in the morning in Lahore. Lahore is a city of about 6 million people, and it's a big airport. And I noticed right before they were getting ready for their, their landing procedure, they turned off all the lights. And I asked the steward, I said, why did you turn off the lights? And they says, it's more difficult to shoot down a plane if there are no lights on it. 
And I thought, boy, I'm not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> and that kind of set my tone. We went to the to places where we we're going to stay, and it's kind of about 4 o'clock in the morning. We got about an hour of sleep, and then all the calls to prayer started happening all over the city, and I really knew <laughs> that I was out of my league. You know, but what happened there was amazing. One of the things that we would do is we would travel out from Lahore to these small villages where we built schools. And, uh, and we travel and visit the schools and the kids, and they were so excited always to receive us. And one morning, uh, we, were, we met and we were going out to this village that's about 60 miles away. It took us four hours, four hours to go 60 miles because the roads were either mud or dirt and full of potholes and everything else. So along the way, it was about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Now, the, the, you have to understand the Pakistanis have been influenced by the British. And so what do the British do every afternoon? Tea time. Tea. Tea is absolutely essential. It's like coffee. Essential in Pakistan. You know, that, that book, Three Cups of Tea, is, is real. If you, if you enjoy tea with a person more than three times, you're the friend for life. And so we were going along to in the middle of nowhere. And all of a sudden, the van stops. We all get out, and they bring out the tea service. Not cups, not paper cups, but crystals, you know, porcelain cups, tea cups, and saucers, and cookies, and the whole tea. And we were standing there by the side of the road in the middle of nowhere, and we were drinking tea and eating cookies and other things. And I looked down the road, and there's this mud hut. And I saw somebody walking from the mud hut. And I, of course, my senses were heightened, and I was wondering what's going on here. That, and I, as she got closer, I noticed there's a woman, and she had a basket. And she was bringing some of her guava fruit to us. Because she saw us standing there, and she wanted to give us something. And so this woman who practically had nothing was bringing fruit to us. And also she knows we're standing up, so she went back to her house, and they have these rope beds that they use for almost everything, for sitting, sleeping, everything else. So she brought one of her rope beds so that we could sit down. And I was amazed. Here I was in the middle of nowhere in a country that is known for its violence, and this Muslim woman, and that's what she was, this Muslim woman was coming out to bring something to us. You know, it reminded me so much this week as I thought about this verse when Jesus said, whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Now we have to understand something about the original language here. The cup of cold water is the least act of hospitality that we can do. It's the least gift. And I was thinking of this woman. What was her, what was her gift? To us it was the least. To her it was great. But she at least brought what she had and offered it to us. And that was a big threat because here we were, obviously there were Pakistanis with us, but we were Westerners. She'd probably <laughs> never seen someone stop and have tea beside the road before, especially if they're dressed up. And over there, if you're very formal, if you go to an occasion, you're dressed in a suit and tie and all kinds of things. So this woman brought out her least gift, the cup of cold water. My friends, we also need to see this in the context of the rest of the chapter. Because this is a chapter where Jesus sent out 12 disciples. And he said, go into villages and preach the gospel. And he said this, take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey, or two tunics or sandals or a staff, for laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who in it is worthy and stay there until you leave. Have you ever wondered who was worthy? Was it the worthy people, the rich ones, that had everything so they could give them a great time? No. The worthy ones, who those are the ones who practice hospitality. 
even the least, the cup of cold water. They were the worthy ones. And Jesus said, there are going to be those people in every town you go to. So seek them out. And you're going to know them by their acts, by the hospitality that they would have. My friends, it's no accident that the word hospital and hospitality come from the same root word. They both mean healing. Oddly enough, both of them mean healing. And when we think about it, when we offer that cup of cold water, whatever we can, we offer that sense of hospitality, we bring about healing in amazing ways. My friends, when we say, come over to our house, well, now we have to be careful about that. All right. But I'll have a cup of coffee for you. You know, I'm going to pray for you. What does that say to the other person? It says, I'm important. I'm important enough that you're going to think about me. And you're going to do something about that. So it brings about healing in amazing ways. I have noticed down through the years I've been in the ministry that the probably the biggest way that a person really comes to know the Lord is through the hospitality of a Christian. That act of hospitality, that act of affirming that person, really is what brings them into Christian church. My friends, it's amazing to me that in the Old Testament, the word stranger and hospitality is mentioned 92 times. 92 times. And then in the New Testament, Paul writes, we were once all strangers from the covenant and without hope, but now in Christ we were far, we who were far have been drawn near. We were all strangers. I think about that. I can't help but think about this in the world we are living in now. You know, it's interesting that hospitality also means xenophilia. You know what xenophilia is? It's a love of strangers. You know what we have today? Xenophobia. We have a fear of strangers. My friends, but God has said, Xenophilia, you were a stranger. And we were reminded that, the Jews were reminded that every Passover we were wandering Aramaeans. And Jesus said, I go to way to prepare a place for you. I'm going to welcome you into my own home so that you can be where I am. Hospitality. My friends, I find it amazing that today we're struggling with this. It's all over the Bible. It's all over the Bible. Care for the stranger in your midst. Provide hospitality. But we're having a problem with that for all kinds of reasons. Now, I'm not going to get political this morning. But I just think that we need to think about that, especially some of the things that are going on. Charles Spurgeon, a great preacher from the old times, he said, How gracious of the Lord to mention so insignificant an action, even a cup of cold water. This I can do, however poor. This I may do, however lowly. This I will do cheerfully. This which seems so little, the Lord notices, notices when done to the least of his followers. That's a great statement. You see, Jesus keeps it pretty simple. He doesn't ask us something we can't do. He asks us to do something we can do. And we can all do something. We can smile at a person in a supermarket or something. We can cheer a person. We can call a person. We can send a card. We can say, we love you, we care about you. We can all do that. That's a cup of cold water. I heard of a story, a true life story, about a doctor who was driving through a poor section of town. And he saw this little boy on the corner. And the little boy was waving him down. And the doctor decided he wasn't going to stop. He was going to keep right on going. And he was driving a new car, and he didn't know what's going to happen if he stopped. Well, he got past the little boy and then slowed down for a red light, and he heard this crash. And he looked back, 
and he realized the little boy had thrown a brick into his car. So he slammed on the brakes, went back, grabbed the little boy and said, you juvenile delinquent, I'm going to see that you go to jail. And the little boy said, sir, my mother is home on the floor and I think she's dying. And our phone was cut off and we had no way of getting to a doctor. And send me to jail if you want. But c please take care of my mother. And the man said, I'm a doctor, so I'll go with you. And he went and did CPR and called an ambulance. And the little boy said, is my mother going to live? And he said, yes. And the little boy said, you know, you can take me to jail now. And he said, I'm not going to do that. And besides that, I'm going to leave that dent in my car. Which reminds me that there are a lot of people crying out for healing, for help, for hospitality. And may we not be so stubborn as to need a brick thrown into our car to hear it. And he said, I'm going to leave that dent to make sure I remember. My friends, these are tough words in some ways because we all know that we, we lack doing hospitality. We can do better. But I'm not asking us to feel guilty. I don't think Jesus wants us to feel guilty. I think he just wants us to do what we can. Just do the things that we can do to make a difference. Whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of the disciple, truly I tell you, None of these will lose their reward. Is Jesus asking us to do something we can't do? I don't think so. He's asking us something we can do. Maybe baking a pie. If you ever want to bake a pie, I'm available. <laughs> Especially pecan, right? Definitely. Or we just want to send a card. Mark would love to receive a card, wouldn't he? Or we might want to invite somebody to church. This would be a blessing to them. It is to me as I look out. You know, we are a, we are a small church. And so, a lot of people in big churches kind of like, oh, you're a small church. I say, yes, we're a small church. You know what? We can care for each other. We can know each other. We can make it happen in this church. We can make a difference. We can show hospitality to each other. We can care for each other. We can pray for each other. We can reach out. We're not a number. We're people, friends, family. And may we carry through on that. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we were strangers to you and you took us in. We were going away from you, and you continued to love us. And you offer us your hospitality. We give you thanks, Lord. Now, Lord, we have the wonderful privilege of living in your family, in your church. We thank you for this church. We thank you for this church which has stood over decades and has been a haven for many. Thank you for the many ways people of this church express concern and love through their hospitality. Thank you for the way people who are going through difficult times are cared for. And we also thank you that our hospitality goes beyond this church and reaches out into the world where so many are in need of a cup of cold water. Lord, we are living through difficult times, times when we are divided over race and inequality, over how we will deal with this pandemic, over political issues that seem to not reflect the needs around us, or throughout the world. But we know, Lord, you are here. You are calling us to make a difference, even in small ways every day. Oh God, we know you are a God of love, and you're working through so many people throughout the world to bring about peace, to bring about wholeness, and yes, even scientific to bring a cure to this disease. We pray for them. We pray that you'll strengthen them and give them courage and wisdom and skill as they do their work. We pray that you will be with all your peacemakers. 
even those who are working in ways that we often don't think of it. Those health care workers, those cleaners, those store clerks, those people who are faithfully doing their jobs. Lord, we know that there are people in our midst who are going through suffering. We pray for their healing. We pray for Mark. and We're just overjoyed that Patty is with us today. We pray for John and Joanne. And Lord, during a time of silence, help us to lift up those people on our hearts. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers. And we bring all these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our hymn is Just a Closer Walk with Thee, and that's a prayer. Just a Closer Walk with Thee. Stand if you'd like. Keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as I walk. Let me walk close to thee. Just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus is my plea. this morning to Mark's sister-in-law, and I just got a message back from her. Um, his tube feeding continues due to the no significant healing in the damaged pas passage tissue to the esophagus. 
So, um, and she does say that he enjoys the cards that he gets. Great, great. Good. Thank you, Linda. You know, the Lord heard our prayer. Heard our prayer. Look at it. No rain. That's wonderful. That is fantastic. It is good to be together. And uh, we're going to go from this place out into the world to show hospitality. That's what this church is all about. And I th it really, it, it is. That's what amazed me and attracted me from the very beginning about this church. We show hospitality. And we want to do that as much as we can. Uh, anybody need to say a final word? If not, as we go from this place of worship, God sends us out to places of work and service and praise. We go in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you. There's still coffee.